What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another review. This time we'll take a look at Lethal Weapon 3, starring, once again, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, and once again, directed by Richard Donner. Lethal Weapon 3 tells, the, once again, sees Merton Riggs on the beat. This time they got to take down a former police lieutenant and Jack Travis, who is now a arms dealer who's smuggling guns at a police department and is also a leader of a group of cop killers. So that is the overall premise of Lethal Weapon 3. To me... I really, really enjoyed Lethal Weapon 3. I, I think this movie is better than the first and the second movie. I think this movie has a much more darker tone to it, yet still has that, yet still has a lot of comedy in it. And I think it does a good balance of mixing this, its comedy and its drama and its action really, really, really well. <clears throat> uh, so let's get right into it. Overall, the cast in this movie, as usual, is awesome. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, their relationship as Riggs and Murtaugh gets taken up to another level. Pretty much in this movie, Murtaugh is pretty much a week from retirement, and he's pretty much, you know, trying he's pretty much trying to settle into not getting into getting out of the cop life. But in so doing so, he's gotta crack this case of, with this uh, cop killer Jack Travis. But also on the on the flip side of that. Murtaugh gets involved in a shootout three days before his retirement, retirement and he ends up killing this uh, gangbanger kid named Daryl, who's also the son of his uh, of his son, who's also the son, who is also the friend of his son Nick. So this pretty much breaks Murtaugh down to his core because he basically shot a child. He shot a baby. Not only that, he shot somebody that was close to his son. So I like how this psychologically just destroys Murtaugh, which leads to this great scene on a boat between Riggs and Murtaugh as they pretty much pour their hearts out to one another. And you really feel the genuine sincerity of, of their friendship. And you really get a sense that Riggs and Murtaugh, they view each other as family. They're like brothers in a way. And I like how the scene plays out because it's kind of like a nice parallel to the first Lethal Weapon movie where, where Riggs was pretty much down on his luck and just depressed. Now we get to see Murtaugh who is now down on his luck and depressed. Norm Murtaugh is normally the straight hour guy, but now he's been broken, and now Riggs, the man who was broken, has to be his his uh, has to be his uh, companion in a way. It's a gr it's great stuff between it's great stuff from a character perspective, and it really just enhances the friendship that these two men share. I love it a lot, and of course the banter between Mel Gibson and Danny Glover is always top notch. The jokes in this movie they all land, particularly this little funny subplot of this. Uh, uh, this uh, security guard named Dolores who has a crush on Murtaugh and you get this real funny scene where she comes to the police department and uh, Riggs is pretty much <laughs> it's, it's a funny scene you gotta watch it it's a nice little humorous scene it's great stuff uh, Joe Pesci returns as Leo Getz who is now a real estate agent trying to sell the Murtaugh house Joe Pesci he's funny as usual uh, this movie does not have a lot of Leo Getz but he is pivotal to the movie because his character is connected to the Jack Travis characters as, as they used to have a former business relationship with one another. So Leo Getz does have an intriguing role to play in this movie. And when, and all the scenes that Joe Pesci's in, he's hilarious. And the chemistry he has with Glover and with uh, Gibson, top notch as it was in the second movie. It's even better in this movie. I love it. Also, Rene Russo is introduced, is introduced in this movie as Lenora, as Lenora Cole, who is an internal and there's... <clears throat> officer and Cole is probably one of the most underrated female characters in action movies I didn't realize how much I liked the Cole character until I saw this movie I thought Renee Russo gave her a nice saucy personality she works great off Mel Gibson and this is a romantic relationship that works the first one that that uh, Riggs had in, in the second movie didn't work but the Cole relationship this works because they're both cops so they have similar experiences. And you have a nice little scene that's a, that's a nice little tribute to Jaws where they're sharing war wounds. Not only, not only that, Cole can handle herself. There's this great scene where she's taking on like five guys in like a, at a mechanic shop and she's just kicking all kinds of ass. And she's, just, and she's great. Renee Russo, fantastic performance. Uh, Stuart Wilson, who plays the character of Jack Travis. I like the character of Jack Travis. I think Jack Travis is one of the better lethal weapon villains. And... I like the fact that he's a former cop because he's an inside man and you will not suspect someone like him. Of course, he makes a mistake and everyone and everyone knows that he's doing what he's doing. But I thought Stuart Wilson 
gave a good performance, and I and I and I enjoyed him in the role. And I also like this little subplot where he kidnaps the police captain and Riggs and Murtaugh pretty much gotta rescue him. So I like all that stuff. So yeah, all that stuff is great. And of course, this movie has those awesome little moments as well, like with Riggs interacting with the Murtaugh family. You know, you got a nice little moment with uh, Murtaugh teaching his son Nick how to shave and stuff like that. And of course, again, you get the somber scenes, like the boat scene where, where, where Riggs and Murtaugh pour, pour each other's hearts out to one another. And you get the funeral scene where they're burying the where they're burying the kid that uh, Murtaugh shot in self-defense. You know, you get those nice little tender moments. You get the romance between Riggs and between Riggs and Cole, which is not forced. It's very, very natural. Like I said, Rene Russo and Mel Gibson have a very underrated chemistry with one another. They they work great with one another. Great stuff. So yeah, and of course, from a production standpoint, this movie is once again brilliant. This movie looks fantastic. This movie is, has cinematography done by Jan de Bont. If you don't know who Jan de Bont is, then you know the movies Twister and Speed. Those are two of his biggest movies that he's worked on. And of course, de Bont's also worked on the original Die Hard movie. So he's a very skilled uh, cinematographer. And this movie feels like a Die Hard movie. It has that cinematic feel of a Die Hard movie. And Richard Donner's direction in this movie outdoes what he did in 1 and 2. I think the action is much more cleaner, it's much more slick, it's much more stylized, and it looks great. This is a great looking movie from a production value. It's really got that 90s feel to it, and I love it a lot. So yeah, I don't have a whole lot of complaints to say about Lethal Weapon 3 because it has a lot of things that I really did enjoy about it, and I consider this to be my favorite Lethal Weapon movie, which is why I'm going to give Lethal Weapon 3 a 10 out of 10. To me, this is the perfect Lethal Weapon movie. I like it better than 1 and 2. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Lethal Weapon 3. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.